Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please rise as we sing together the great Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We welcome you to worship on this day of our Lord's resurrection. It's the day that changed everything. Sin and death were defeated. Eternal life was won. And we pray that good news will fill you with joy and faith and the assurance of salvation through Christ Jesus our Lord. Special welcome to visitors who are here with us, or guests, extended family who have gathered for the holiday. We pray you have a blessed celebration together. If you haven't done so yet, we'd ask you to grab the pew pads, the welcome pads at the inside end, should be at the inside end of each row. Uh, fill those out and pass them back and forth. It's just really helpful for us later to go through and know who all was here at uh, these services today. Speaking of which, we owe thanks to many, many people uh, to make these services possible. Our first service, uh, or 8 o'clock service rather, was uh, broadcast over the radio. That was sponsored today by Muriel Dobratz in memory of her husband, Elroy, along with her family. Elroy died now 15 years ago, so our thanks to them uh, for that gift in his memory. And we're grateful to all those who donated flowers. Uh, you can see in the green insert the names and uh, those who are honored or in memory of as those flowers were given. Uh, those of you who did donate, if you want to pick up uh, your flower after this service, that is fine, or you can do it next week. But do know there are name tags on them, so you can get the specific kind of flower that you ordered. 
We also are grateful to musicians and ushers and acolytes and many more behind the scenes. So it just takes a lot of hands for these festival services and we're really grateful for all that help. Just a couple of notes about the life of the church in this next week. Uh, a new faith group's study uh, on the gospel, kind of the heart and soul of uh, what we're about, starts this week. Their video-based small group discussion. Um, we really encourage you to be a part of one. Uh, you can form your own or join one that already is meeting. You can talk to Marcia Schmidt about that. Also, a new grief support group is starting this week. If uh, you or someone you know is uh, bearing the burden of loss in these days, we encourage you to come. It starts on Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock. You can find out more from Pastor Paulus or just call the church office. And then uh, either next Sunday or the Sunday after, we encourage all the members of faith to attend one of the Phase Two Building Committee presentations. They'll be during the Sunday school hour uh, when uh, kids are in Sunday school. Uh, and we've already seen some of the plans the architect laid out. This is more the vision, the why. Uh, what is it that's driving this and uh, what the ministry vision is for it. So uh, the two days will be identical, so either one, but we do encourage you to come and listen to that. Meanwhile, if you haven't seen uh, the layout, there is a display board in the back, one at the bottom of the steps, and then one out in the north entryway, so you can take a look at those as well. Everything you need for the service is in your bulletin and on the screens, and so at this time I invite you to rise and to share the peace of the risen, resurrected Lord with one another as we prepare to sing This is Amazing Grace.
The grace of the risen Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The first scripture reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. The prophet Isaiah declares, the long wait is over. The time for rejoicing is here, for God has saved us. He has engulfed death itself. Sin and its resultant death is swallowed up forever. The Lord has accomplished the impossible. Reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. St. Paul preached the good news to the Corinthian Christians that Christ died for the sins of all who believe and was raised according to the scriptures. Paul then reports that the risen Lord Jesus appeared to many, including Paul himself. Reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. This time we invite children to come forward for Faith Seeds with Faith Lutheran Puppet. Good morning, everyone. Hello, boys and girls. Happy Easter, Grandpa. Happy Easter, Billy. He is risen. Yeah. Billy, you're supposed to say he is risen indeed. Yeah, about that. I'm confused. I thought we cleared this up last year. No, that was when I thought you said he is raisin. I didn't feel right calling Jesus a shriveled old grape. So, what is it this year? Well, I checked every map I could find, and I just can't find that town. Huh? What town? Deed. I can't find it. I even Googled it. Do you think it's really small, like Bisky? <laughs> have you been drinking some of the Easter egg dye? I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Indeed, Grandpa. You said it yourself. He is risen indeed. Where in the world is deed? Billy, indeed isn't a place. It's all one word. Indeed, it means without a doubt. Absolutely, for sure. Well, so why don't we say he is risen for sure? Uh, Billy, it isn't a place. What are you talking about? Well, so, so there's no town named D. Indeed, it's just got a nicer ring to it. Okay. Well, I'm confused. Nope, Jesus was raised from a tomb by Israel. And he is also risen in our hearts and all over the world. Cool. So Jesus was not a raisin, raised in a town called Deed. Indeed. So let's try it. Billy, Christ has risen. He is risen in Hutch, for sure. <laughs> Can I get a new puppet partner? Bye, everyone. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, you guys. You guys can head back to your folks. Thanks for coming up. Please rise for the gospel. for this Resurrection Sunday comes from Mark chapter 16, beginning in verse 1. <clears throat> when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen and they went to the tomb, they had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us and, uh, from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What an odd gospel, Mark wrote. The gospel of Mark is by far the shortest of the four gospels. It moves at a breakneck speed for the first two thirds of it. Everything in it is kept so secretive and it has some odd features like the naked streaking young man at Jesus' arrest who may have been Mark, actually, including himself in the story. But nothing is odder than the Gospel of Mark's ending. While our Bibles have 20 verses in Mark chapter 16, most have some sort of note that explains that many reliable manuscripts end the Gospel after verse 8. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, 
for they were afraid. What a very, very strange way to end a gospel that begins by declaring that this, that this is the good news of Jesus Christ. It's no wonder someone saw fit to add a happy ending to Mark's gospel. But Mark's gospel is so unsensational. Whereas Matthew, Luke, and John feature uh, things like angels in dazzling clothes, uh, tombstones flipped away, guards acting like dead men, earthquakes, and stunning resurrection appearances by Jesus. Mark, unremarkably, reports that there was just a young man dressed in white and frightened women scared into silence. It's like Mark needed an editor, someone to tell him to spice it up a little bit. Mark, you can't leave your readers hanging on like that. Throw them a bone or something. But, as for unremarkable and unsensational Mark's ending is, I've got to hand him this. Mark does include one of the five most amazing statements ever said. Number five was said by Joe Buck, and it still rings in my ears. Digs, caught, sideline, touchdown, unbelievable. That is, of course, from the Minneapolis miracle. Meanwhile, the other four greatest sentences ever said all relate to a different miracle. The greatest miracle ever. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus from the dead. And they're all equally great. The Gospel of John's version is a question. The same question asked twice. Uh, first by the angel in the tomb, and then by the resurrected Lord himself. Woman, why are you crying? In other words, Christ is risen. There's no need to cry. Matthew's version is said by the angel. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Luke's version is a little shorter. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. And finally, from our gospel reading for, from today, from Mark do not be alarmed, the angel says. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. These are the greatest statements ever uttered. The good news the gospel, they proclaim that Christ is risen, that he is risen indeed. And while they're all different, Mark's version has a unique feature that I find intriguing. Just like in Matthew's version, the angel says, go tell his disciples. But notice, Mark's version gets a little more specific. And Peter. Go tell his disciples and Peter. Peter, Mr. I'll never deny you, Jesus. And then just a couple hours later denies him three times. Yeah, go tell him that Jesus has risen from the dead and that he will see him. I mean, Peter should have been excluded from having an appearance by the resurrected Lord. I mean, really all the disciples should have been excluded they were all cowards, but Peter especially. But yet he says, tell him. Jesus is coming to see him. There is a tradition that Mark, the traditional author of this gospel, composed it using Peter's notes or listening to Peter's preaching. Now we have no idea if this is true, but if it were, 
I would imagine that this is the kind of detail that Peter would want included. He came back for me, the loser that denied him. He said, go tell the disciples and Peter. He came back for me and Paul. Not to be outdone, St. Paul shares his own story of unlikely inclusion. 1 Corinthians 15 is the resurrection chapter in the Bible. As Paul dives into the wonder and amazement of Jesus' resurrection, he says it's the most important thing. In our, in our reading from today, Paul lists off all the people he knew of that the risen Lord Jesus had appeared to. And it's an amazing list, including Peter and all the disciples, even Jesus' brother, James, and then amazingly, over 500 brothers and sisters at once. And then he adds, and Paul. As one untimely born, he says, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Jesus appeared to a denier, Peter, and then a persecutor, Paul. He rose from the dead for them. And Justin. Justin is a 30-something-year-old cat lover who wandered in to worship one Sunday in January, and he really hasn't missed a Sunday since. After a lifetime of wandering, Jesus got a hold of him. He was baptized in February, and now he owns more books on Lutheranism than I do. The resurrection was for Justin and Jill. Jill also found herself drawn back to worship. She comes to visit me in my office with beautifully written, several page long life narratives filled with questions about the faith. She has been recaptivated to, by worship and the life in Christ. The resurrection is for Jill, too. And Kylie. Kylie, a high school student who perhaps against her parents' wishes has fallen in love with Jesus and his church. Her first worship service was Ash Wednesday. She said she was scared to death which on Ash Wednesday is kind of appropriate. She is so excited for her first mission trip to Alabama and looks forward to being baptized in the Gulf of Mexico, where Jesus will assure her, I died and rose for you. And me, the power of Christ's resurrection continues to astound me and catch me off guard. I see tears fill in the eyes of people when I tell them that their, that their sins are forgiven. When I, I see them comforted by the assurance that their risen Savior is with them always. And I know that when I preach about Jesus, it is by his Holy Spirit that those words create faith in you. It blows me away that the Lord rose for a sinner like me and can use even me somehow to do his work. And you. That's why you're here this morning. And that's the good news I have for you. Because the angel's greatest of all time message, that Christ is risen, was for his disciples and Peter and Paul and you. It was for you. For all of you. In fact, when I say the statement, I want you to insert your name in the blank and say it like you mean it, all right? Let's go. He has been raised. He is not here. But go tell his disciples and that he is going ahead of you.
That's right. It doesn't matter if you've repeatedly denied him, like Peter. It makes no difference if you've avidly opposed him, like Paul, or if you've doubted him, like Thomas, or if you just continue to sin against him, like me, or like the people on either side of you. You see, Christ was born that he might be with broken and lost people, and you. And Christ died, and he died for the sins of the world, and you. And Christ is risen, and this is good news for the whole world, and you. So Christ is present. He's here in the midst of his church for his people and for you. So rejoice. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.
Please rise as you are able, as together we confess the great truths of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue to worship God now using our tithes and gifts and offerings.
Let us bow our heads and hearts together in prayer. O oh Lord our God, the cross of Christ exposes our sinful human nature and how captive we are to our own agendas. We confess, Lord, that we sin against you by what we do and by what we fail to do in our thoughts, words, and deeds. We do not love you with our whole heart. We too often ignore the needs of our neighbors. Though you won our salvation on the cross, we neglect to follow you in faith and obedience. And so, Lord, for the sake of your crucified and risen Son, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God's answer to our plea for forgiveness is the promise that Jesus died and rose again for our salvation. And therefore, in the mystery and grace of God's will, he now hands over to us all the benefits of Christ's victory over sin and death through the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. For this holy meal brings home to each one of his followers individually the salvation that Christ Jesus has accomplished. And so listen now to the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the very night in which he was betrayed to death for our salvation, took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All baptized Christians who cling to Jesus' promise to be present for us through uh, the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper are welcome to receive the sacrament today. Those not baptized or children not yet communing are urged to come forward to receive a blessing. For those who uh, need it, we have gluten-free wafers and non-alcoholic wine. You can uh, request those from your server. But all is prepared. Our Lord invites you. Come to the Feast of Salvation.
The body of our Lord Jesus Christ in his precious blood strengthen you in true faith and preserve you unto everlasting life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing song, Death Was Arrested.
peace and serve the Lord.